it's time. All right, here we go. The cocktail show. Get ready to have a good time. Let's have a good time. This is exciting, isn't it? Oh, I like that. Hello, testing, testing, testing. Welcome aboard the Dream Rider. It's the only way to fly. Wow. <laughs> I've allotted one hour for recreational activity. There's no time for a relevant conversation. Fun will now commence. Cocktail show. Gary, Gary, Gary. Here's a young speaker who is really in demand. Don't let that go to your head, Gary. <laughs> but wait, there's more. I'm the guy. Finger guy. Three, two, one, zero. Welcome to the Gary Meyer Show Cocktail Hour Live. 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 Cocktails. Woo. Drinks. We're streaming live at 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 Central. On Friday, February 23rd, 2024. And of course, no matter where you are, it's time for a digital mimosa. As regular Gear Force Live viewers know, where I am is Central Florida. Though I've lived here for nearly a decade now, and had traveled here many times over the past ahem, half century, this week I decided it was time for my first ever visit to one of its oldest tourist attractions, Citrus Tower. It opened in 1956 amidst acres of citrus groves, just like Disneyland did out in California the previous year. When it opened, it was billed as the highest observation point in all of Florida. It stands at 543 feet above sea level, but since it's built on the hills of Claremont, Florida, it's only about 22 stories high. For comparison, Chicago's Sears, um, oh, uh, Willis Tower is 110 stories and stands about 1,300 feet above sea level. Anyway, these days you don't see many citrus groves from up top, but you can see downtown Orlando 23 miles to the east. You can also see Walt Disney World Resort, which opened 15 years after the tower, 15 miles to the southeast. And my house was built a good number of years after that over that way, too. How's that for getting the nonsense rolling this week? Kablooey! Ah, uh, that's good. Yeah. Disappear. Disappear. Yep. The best way to watch this show is the Gear Force Live YouTube channel. YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. Subscribe to the Gear Force Live YouTube channel. More eyeballs. It's a good thing. Please like and share the show on all the social media channels. Comments during the live show, wherever we are streaming, can be seen in our virtual studio. We may show them on the screen and or talk about them. Ooh. And that's it. Now, fasten your seatbelts. It's time to go wheels up on the Gear Force Live. Live! 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 The following may be disturbing on America's podcast. Boom! Shaka Laka! Dream Motors with you. Boom! Shaka Laka is right. We are almost airborne. In just a few minutes, we'll have the wheels up. I just got a report from the tower that we might be encountering some goo along the way. So I'm going to have to ask you to keep seat belts tightly fastened on this particular Gear Force ride. Let me kick the tires and light the fires and get going here. All right, one more sequence has to happen. We do it every week. As you know, if you're a regular, this woman is going to release her condom. I will. Finger gun, Got finger a gun. bottle of Josh Chardonnay. There I is. love Josh. Josh and I get along really uh, well. Uh -huh. And oh, look, look at, the at tip. this. Look at yeah. this thing. That's going to okay. blow. So here we go. Yep. Ready? Uh, you know what? Honestly. Put your, yeah, put your Oppenheimer I, yeah. goggles on. <laughs> yeah, we might have to use protective eyewear today. Yep, here we go. Okay, here we go, Three, kids. Two. 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 Uh, oh. Wow, that was, you know, <laughs> that did not deliver what it looked like it was going to deliver. No, it just kind of went, it went, eh. It was, eh. <laughs> oh, well, Josh, <laughs> is, Josh, he can turn up. Yeah, Josh, he, you don't know what Damn Josh it. is going to do. Or maybe it's time for me to get a new condom. You know, they say, <laughs> word on the street is you should only use a condom once. We here on the Gear Force uh, like to recycle, but it's a very different phenomenon here. Uh, so maybe I'll get me a freshie next okay. week. Okay. Well, anyway, it, it didn't hit you in the eye. That's the main thing. I have uh, a few things to do before we bring our guest on. And uh, look at me. I'm a Gen Zer. I'm on the <laughs> trim line. I'm on the trim line. I'm playing with the core. Gen Zers, they want to go to the the phones that we used to have because they like to touch something because they're not touching 
other people. They're not touching anything. They're just touching their, their smartphone. And now they're looking at all the cool stuff we had. And yeah, you want to have they something to twirl. They play with the, with the cord. Yes. But it, it, I'll tell you what, it does feel good. Let's face yeah. it. From an anal retentive standpoint, though, there was nothing worse than sharing a phone with some a-hole who got that thing all wound yeah. up inside Mandled. itself? Yeah. Oh. Look at that. Come on. Yeah, but that oh, that's why that's, that's why by the early 2000s they had those little things that you put on the bottom of the phone that spun. Oh, so no matter the, how many times you twisted up the cord, it never exactly. tangled and yeah. Did you have a real long cord when you were living at home because you have a lot of family members all using one phone and you wanted some privacy. So you'd have to go into another room and shut the door. You needed a long cord. We had a, um, like a 50 footer. Well, my parents were the kind who uh, didn't want any shenanigans in their house. So the cord was really short. We had like a little desk area and you could use the phone in the desk area and you could talk no, quietly, man. but yeah. No. So as soon as I got my own place, yeah, I got me a 20-foot cord just because I could. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can walk anywhere I want within 20 feet. I don't feet. care. <laughs> Damn it. And our good friend George Bliss sent me this trim line phone. He said, if you do any kind of interviews via the phone, these hardwired landline phones, that, that's the best quality. So have that ready to go now. We talked about this the other day, and what happened was it yesterday with the sunspots? Was the, is it sunspots? They're saying interrupted all the phones. Uh, some sort of technical. It wasn't a cyber attack. It was some other technical issue. Yes, it was. It a lot sounds of people, like human. It sounds like human error. I that's mean, kind of what it, nobody it sounds wants. Like to whoever say. was upgrading the network didn't flip a switch or didn't add some code and uh, sent all of us into cell phone oblivion for what? Do you have hours? a landline, Alan? No, I, I no, had one in okay, Chicago, so, but when I moved okay, here, no. That, that, that was the point they made where all, a lot of these people, all of them did have land, so they were screwed. They had no phone. And that's why you want to not make fun of us who still have landlines. Okay? Uh, um, I'm thinking all the shit comes down. A ham radio group <laughs> so that I can put one of those big giant towers out back and I can be in communication with Alaska in the case of a EMP uh, I, or anywhere on the planet. But I, okay, yeah, I well, haven't pulled the trigger yet. We are so reliant on all this stuff. And if some ne'er-do-well wants to flip hmm. a switch, we're going to be sitting here with nothing. The banking industry, every industry, automotive. I mean, yeah, the, if somebody wants to wreak some havoc, there's havoc to be wreaked. Yes. Right? <laughs> like so. that. If you see that, well, and, and as we were getting ready, testing everybody's audio, we were having all kinds of issues. And I don't know if it's the sunspots, if it's the Chinese, it's Hamas. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? I but like something. Michael Breaker 19. Yeah, we'll all go back to CB radios. Yeah, exactly. This here's uh, the rubber duck. How you doing? A gin and tonic tonight with a spherical ice cube in honor of oh. us landing on the moon for the first time in 50 some years again. Boy, that didn't take long. Um, and and we got to start doing stuff like that again. I heard that the signal was weak from, so maybe they're having the same problems okay. we are. <laughs> are we still in contact with the lander? Is, is I just everything? heard it landed yesterday. And I haven't seen anything today about it. I don't. Yeah, the know. last the last news item I saw earlier today said it was communicating as expected. Okay. Boom. All right. There you go. Let's Yay. go to the screen door and see who's checked in. And as we do every week, we look at Keelyanne's first because she's usually first in. And let's put her up on the screen. All right. Today is National Dog Biscuit Day. Dip the biscuit in gravy before feeding your schnauzer. See Urban oh. Dictionary for recipe. Uh, oh, okay. yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, be afraid. Yeah. Be very yeah. afraid. Yeah, that's like uh, <laughs> some of those other descriptions that you might have, might have looked up. And oh, my God, some of the stuff that people are doing, the, <laughs> the Dutch oven. I think it's called the Dutch oven. Oh, right. that, that's quaint these days. Uh, oh, yeah. 
Okay. Uh, Martin from British Columbia, always on board. Thank you, Martin. Good to see you. David R. from Oaklawn, Illinois. My wife tells me the schnauzer is losing its winter coat. Uh, that's wonderful news. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not the a bad winter around the country. Enough. Yeah, you, you want your schnauzer. Well Spring grown. ready. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's Friday. Oh, yes. And that's Brian from Oh, yes. Cheers, Gear Forest. Hello, Brian. Welcome. Samantha from Mundelein, Illinois, always oh. here. We Goodness. should mention Brian and his lovely wife had a uh, uh, anniversary this week. And doggone it, those kids are as cute as the day they got married. Uh, happy anniversary. Yeah. Uh, Loyster has water. Okay. I don't. Uh, Anthony, my schnauzer, uh, said next week will be. Said next will, will be in 5 a.m. area. For what is that? What? I'm looking I through the screen door. I don't. Is it the here? I'm doing door? that that thing that schnauzers do. What? That what? Some what do you say? Do. The the daylight is lengthening. Yes. Next week is the end of winter, February 29th. That's it. It's over. Okay. We're going to break the kneecap of winter on that day, and then we'll break the back of winter when we set the clocks ahead. But here's the dealio. And there was another. Was it Anthony who said it won't be long before I start weed whacking? And I looked out. Today and thought that same thing, Anthony. It'll be a few weeks. The lawnmowers will be out and all the yard equipment. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. It's going to happen saying, very fast this year because we really didn't have any hard freezes for any length of time anywhere around the country. I walked into a hardware store and I smelled fertilizer. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's uh, happening. Either that or the employees hadn't bathed, but I'm thinking it's. They're putting out all the lawn care stuff. Yeah, now. winter's yeah. over. And two women are on this show right now, Leslie and my guest. They both have birthdays coming up within the next few days. Leslie, your birthday is on Wednesday. Happy pre-birthday. Oh, thank you. Thank you very okay. much. And Me. I heard that our guest, Patricia, her birthday is this Sunday. Oh, well, let's no. hear it for the Pisces. Yay, yeah. Pisces. Yeah, all right. Well, we navigate the waters. Let's bring Patricia on and, and talk about her career. How about that? Hello, Patricia. Happy birthday to us. Yee <laughs> A little red wine there, is that? Mm-hmm. Just uh, one glass, but it's a glass. It's my fishbowl. <laughs> yeah, really. Take the glass is off, but everything's blurry, and I don't know if it's the wine or if it's just me. I think it's just me, not the wine. We're going to go with that. Okay. We're well, all friends here. It's cool. Uh, we welcome you, and you have a book out that will give people an idea of what they're heading into if they want to head into show business, which you talk about a career that is not for the squeamish, and I'm sure you have some examples. And uh, I want to start from the beginning. Let's walk through it from where you grew up. Well, the beginning, uh, Chicago. Um, so my fellow Chicagoans. I just found out Leslie is from Lincoln Square, where I grew up and um, started modeling in Chicago when I was about 15, 16. I didn't know what I was doing. So I pulled out the yellow pages and just started going through and talking, calling modeling agencies, just trying to figure out how to navigate things. And luckily, I have an older sister who was like a second mom to me. And she helped me um, figure it out, too, along the way. She held my hand as much as she could. Uh, but started in Chicago and then over time started traveling internationally. Um, and then moved to, to Florida, New York, L.A. And, um, yeah, uh, that's about it. Started with modeling, ended up in acting and hosting, and uh, went to Columbia College in Chicago. Um, I'm a big Chicagoan. I Come, I feel like I never left Chicago. I go back and forth so much that it's like I never left home. At, that's at 15, you decided to, and that's how I got into broadcasting. And they're not going to have that experience, the people coming up. There are no more yellow pages. I wanted, <laughs> no. to get into, I wanted to get into radio, and I thought, well, I don't know anybody in radio. What do I do? So I looked in the yellow pages for broadcasting schools, and there were some in there, and I picked one and started going. And I, I know everything's online. That's your yellow pages. But there was something about opening this big book. Yes. Oh, look, they have an ad. They must be good. And that's how I got into it, too. So at 15, what was the, the moment, though, where you thought, I, I want to do this for a, a little extra cash 
through high school or this is what I want to do for my entire life? I mean, from the age of four or five, I wanted to be a singer and a dancer. Um, I can't sing. Um, oh, dancing, I, I, I did get into dancing. I, I was a dance and theater major at Columbia, and I did backup dancing for bands, and I taught kids how to dance. Um, so the dancing part came in, uh, but then modeling took over. I just, like I said, started calling all the agencies and figuring it out, and then one thing led to the next. Um, from one audition to one job to the next job. And, you know, the more people you end up meeting along the way and networking with, it opened up other doors. And I, I realized uh, with one of the jobs, I ended up going to California and I thought one day I'm going to wind up there. Um, but I love New York. I used to watch fame when I was a kid. And when I saw fame, I knew I was going to live in New York. I, I wanted to be the, that kid that was dancing up on the cars in the middle of the street in the middle of New York. Um, didn't get to do that when I lived in New York, but it was a good dream. You could, but you'd be arrested. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> or beaten if you were on somebody's car and they were in it. Okay, you stayed in Chicago through college, and then right after college, you went to New York? I didn't even finish college. I was there for about a year and a half, and I was working with modeling, traveling internationally, too. So at that point... Um, I ended up, and I hurt myself too. So dancing, I wasn't able to do it as much at that point. Pull off somebody's car while you're dancing? <laughs> it was so stupid. I got stepped on my baby toe. <laughs> I broke it. And it was so painful. I've never experienced pain like that. And then went back when it started healing, went back into dance class. And the same toe got stepped on again, and I rebroke it. And I was like, all right, this isn't meant for me. I, I, I need to move on to other things. So I continued with modeling, and that took me everywhere. And that was just so much fun. I loved it. I got to experience so much, meet so many people, um, just all the great cities and all the great people. Uh, it was pretty cool. But I still had my home base in Chicago as I was traveling around. But then I knew I wanted to venture out and see – what else was out there. And uh, I'm glad I did. And like I said, I come back to Chicago all the time. So it's like I never left home. But um, yeah, I've been to some good places. But if you aspired to go great heights in show business, you have to go to New York or LA, right? You can't do it really with that great goal in mind in any other city. I will say it was uh, it was hard when I was in Chicago because back then when I started, every agency kept telling me I was too ethnic looking. The look then was blonde hair, blue eyes, the girl next door. So I kept hearing that over and over, but I, I didn't want to take no for an answer. So I continued. I mean, I did get some jobs. It, it just wasn't as much as I wanted or you know thought I, I could do. So when I moved to New York, that was a game changer. That's when everything shifted. And I worked a lot. I was constantly working, constantly auditioning. Um, I was just on the go from the, more, the moment I woke up to the moment I would go to sleep. It was just, uh, it was a, a different animal um, out there. And when I went to California, I thought after being in Florida, New York and Chicago, I thought, okay, I've got this. I'll go to California. It'll be easy. Um, I have, you know, this experience behind me. And it wasn't. It was like starting over. Um, L.A., it, New York, you can jump right into the game. You you start booking jobs immediately. L.A., it took people, casting directors, even agents um, to get to know you. You had to build this relationship and the networking and going through all that. Whereas in New York, I didn't have to do the networking. It was go to the agents. They get you auditions. You either book the job or you don't. And you move on to the next thing. So it was a little different, um, something to get used to when I moved to California. Uh, but then I was able, once, you know, more opportunities came, then it just kept expanding and expanding. And then um, I was doing quite a bit. And then when Deal or No Deal came on um, and I was part of that show, that changed even more. All of a sudden, the opportunities were coming to me even more so because now we're on this network show and it was at the height of its um, of everything. So that that changed my life personally and professionally it really was a game changer no and pun intended going to la if you want to feel your soul crush you want to get a feel of what that's like go to la and start <laughs> around in show business because everybody with a dream who has any kind of good look uh, is going to head out there thinking that same thing and there are millions of people walking around thinking they're going to be the next 
Brad Pitt or Julia Roberts or whomever you pick in that sequence. And it is really the deepest end of the pool loaded with sharks. And if you have a remotely thin skin, you might want to stay home because it's not going to be something that's pleasant and it might take a good amount of time. And how much time were you spending out there before it, it clicked in again, where you were in New York and getting the work, you go to LA and it's a little uh, jarring because it wasn't that. When did it, was that when the deal or no deal kicked in? And that's no, what started it all? No, actually, uh, I had been in L.A. for probably a year or two. I always tell everybody, if you're going to move to L.A., it's going to take a couple of years to adjust to everything to really get moving with anything, um, whether, again, personally or professionally. I noticed that for a lot of people, and it definitely was a case for me, too. And I was booking a lot of stuff um, for a few years once I... After those two years, then I started booking work. And um, I would say probably a few years in is when Deal or No Deal came along. Um, and that was just another audition that, uh, again, changed everything. But I had been working quite a bit at that point before Deal or No Deal came along. You could make a living before Deal or No Deal or you had yes. saved some money from New York to survive. Yeah, I absolutely it was. I was very, I, I'm always very good about money. I'm, I'm one of those people. My mom taught me, my sister taught me, you know, you don't just go spend, you don't spend money you don't have. Um, so I was always very careful with my money. I always navigated where, you know, if you don't have it, like I said, you don't, you don't spend it. You know, there could be rainy days and growing up, we went through quite a few rainy days. So that was something that was always instilled in me where it kept me grounded and I was smart about my money. So that's something I talk about with a lot of girls that ask me, how do you get started in the business? I do talk to them about saving their money. And, you know, if you really want to do this, you really need to think about it as a business and not a hobby. Um, if you want to make a living, you could make a living at it. Uh, some people don't believe they could, but you can. It just depends on what you put into it. And how seriously you take it. I mean, everybody thinks it's glitz and glamour and there is glitz and glamour that comes along the way. I've had some amazing experiences, events, places I've visited and worked in. But, um, yeah, you have to be smart about everything. It's There is the business side of it and you have to be on top of that. Even if you have agents, you still need to be your own agent, your own manager, Um I've had many agents along the way, but I always look at the contracts too. I always, you know, I don't leave that to somebody else to tell me what's good or not and what I should or shouldn't do. I take it into consideration. Um, but then at the end of the day, I decide on what I want to do with my career. Did your agent tell you about the deal or no deal audition? How did you hear about that? It was my hosting agent who uh, the word was they were uh, looking for co-hosts for this game show. We didn't know that Howie Mandel was part of it. Uh, they just said it was a co-hosting position. So my modeling agencies never even called me for it. Um, my hosting agent did. What's and a hosting agent? Hosting agent is um, I do infomercials or uh, where I introduce, I interview people on the red carpet or for shows um, like on Extra or um, or Access You're Hollywood, stuff like that. So a TV host. Job. Yeah, okay. it's a hosting job. Um, sorry, I wasn't clear about that. Um, so my hosting agent called me about that, went in, didn't know anything from anything. And when I went in, I saw one of the girls, it, there were only two of us at that time slot. And we had such a completely different look. Usually you have a lot of similarities with the people you're competing against. This girl, she and I were night and day. So I was like, what is this? I thought it might be a model's reality show. And I thought, well, this isn't for me, but I'm going to stick around to find out just in case. Um, glad I did. Went to uh, what we call a callback when they narrow down the group of people they want to see again. So went to the callback and callbacks are usually less people. This was 300 times more uh, people at this audition. All of a sudden, I guess all the agents heard about it and it was um, going to be a big thing. So everybody was in there. And um Again, glad I stuck around. It ended up being a really, usually callbacks are quicker, um, but this ended up being, you know, a couple hours where I was waiting around to figure out what was happening. Uh, and then I booked the job. And usually 
jobs in the modeling and hosting and acting usually are just a few days here, there, or a day job here, a day, you know, on this set or that set. Um, this ended up being years. We were, you know, I didn't uh, never me, expected uh, that. Yeah. I want to walk through all of this because you are auditioning. I saw on the net you auditioning with a briefcase that's out there online. I'm sure you've seen it. Is that how I, they had you audition? They had you actually holding the briefcase? No, they didn't. Um, that might have been for the, the reboot of Deal or No Deal. But the uh, original, they just had us go into a room at the callbacks where there were 10 of us in a row that we walked in and the producers were there, the stylists, the makeup people. Um, and they were lined up and we were lined up and we each individually took a step forward and said our name and had to say something about ourselves. And I talked about coming from New York and that I was a Chicago girl and I'm a big foodie. So that was something else I talked about. Um, and then you take a step back and the next person moves forward and you hear their little spiel. And, you know, it, I think they just wanted to make sure we can all walk and talk and see personality because during the show, you end up getting microphoned, at least some of the girls, not all the girls um, were microphoned to banter with a contestant and with Howie. And um, so they just want to make sure you're comfortable on camera. Um, you know, modeling is definitely different. You're not, you know, you're in a magazine or a print ad being on TV, uh, you know, on a primetime show, it's a little different. Um, so they just want to make sure we were comfortable enough to interact with others and, and have that moment on a microphone. So it worked out well. And we didn't find out we were working with Howie up until rehearsals. We didn't know. And when I saw that Howie came in, I'm like, oh, my gosh. I'm like, I know who that Howie is. Mandel, oh. <laughs> and a so, lot of the girls wait, wait, didn't know okay. who he was. What's that? A lot of the girl, a lot of the models yeah. didn't know who he was because they were a lot younger. So they didn't know. They're like, so who's Howie? I was well, laughing he, so hard. <laughs> he admits this show rebooted his career. And that it set him so on did. the next chapter of his career. Yeah. So you get the call. You audition. You get the call. Hey you're going to be briefcase number nine, or you're one of the girls that they're going to hire. And do they tell you it's for several weeks because they don't know if the show is going to be a success? How does that work? They told us that it was going to be a three-day job. And in those three days, we ended up shooting a bunch of shows um, in a row. And that was in July of 2005. And they aired uh, in mid-December, around right before Christmas, I believe it was, of 2005. And they aired them and the ratings were great. They, they were through the roof. So come January, I got a call from my agent saying, hey, are you available for these dates? And they ended up cutting some girls out from the original that did those shows. Um, and they, so I think about maybe a little bit more than half remained and uh, they brought in a few new girls and kept the rest of us. And we just all of a sudden started getting called back every few weeks. Come back. We're shooting more. They would order more shows. And it just kept happening like that for years. Where was uh, the original show was four seasons. And then in the middle of that is when I got the syndicated version where they chose two, two of us to be on the daytime version and contestants held the cases which was really interesting. It was it played a little differently, but um, some similarities, some differences, but again, fun. And it was five days a week uh, during the day. And that was really cool. And I was working on both for a, uh, for a time. So did you get paid per show? Is that how that works? You get paid per show. And then um, with syndicated, it was great because uh, obviously there are residuals and it plays on different so you, networks. Wait, you negotiate, do all the girls make the same amount of money? Do you know that? Or Yeah, we all, we all. Nobody can uh, negotiate beyond this is the fee they said. This right. This is what you're going to get. And to get a piece of the syndication, though, that that's whatever piece that was. That was really, when I say the show was a game changer, that doing syndicated was a game changer too. It was, it was something I never expected, never. And it was funny. Um, I, I got to go back to my agent who got me this job, uh, who got me this audition that I booked, said to me along the way, uh, I think it was like towards the second year in, he said, I really don't think you should take this again. He's, he didn't think I should move on. He didn't think the pay was good enough. 
And I said to him, I'm like, I get it. I understand. We definitely should be, you know, getting more, but I have a good feeling and I'm going to ride the wave. Um, I'm like, I feel good about this and I'm going to trust that instinct. And so I did. And it was the best thing I did because then it was four years of that show. And then uh, two to three years on the, the daytime version. So it ended up being this big job that I, I never thought uh, I would be part of. Um, so I'm glad I listened to myself, listened to my instincts. And okay. my agent in the end was like, okay, you were right. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. So as the show starts rolling, could you live off the money just from that at that point as that show oh, yeah. started to heat up? You could have just done that and not any other job, and that would have been sufficient. Yes. I, I will say I uh, didn't have to take any other jobs. When I was working in New York and L.A., um, I haven't done anything else. This is all I've done. So I've been able, even pre-deal or no deal, I did well. But definitely deal put it, uh, you know, in a different realm, different bracket. But your agent saying, I don't like the money. And I would imagine, and this is the the fever that happened with Vanna White recently where yes. she said, well, I want the same as Pat Sajak. And then it was revealed and we'll go with this being true. Let's say $3 million a year is what she's making to work 40 some days a year. And I think most people are going, okay, what is the skill to get whatever you can get? And I would imagine a lot of people are going, you're opening a briefcase. I know you have to have a person out all that, but I would imagine the producers are going to use that as a negotiating point of we can get anybody to open a briefcase. So if you were right to keep going and I don't know what the agent was thinking, he's getting a percentage or she's getting a percentage. So what's the, yeah. What is, what is and that I will thinking? say I, I knew when there were some people that didn't like the pay or, and they decided to opt out and decided not to do the show. And I'm like, you know, there are a lot of people lined up to take this job because once this show hit and everybody knew this show, they were they were still auditioning girls the whole time we were going yeah, all four years reason. and they had alternates. And if somebody was sick or somebody opted out, somebody had another job, they always had somebody to take her place. So, um you know, okay, I knew I, that. I definitely did. But I loved yeah. being on the show, so I didn't care. I was right. having the best time and working all the time. So I was enjoying it. I don't expect you to tell me how much you were making, but I'm guessing that the work day was not that long to do what you had to do for the money oh. you're making. Am I right? You'd be surprised the hours. So a one hour show takes four to six hours to tape. Okay. So we would do three shows a day. Um, for the daytime version, we did five to 10 shows a day. Um, and they were half hour shows, but we did five to 10 and we squeezed them in, in 18 to 20 hours a day. So we worked long hours. Um, you're paid by the show. Um, so, but it adds but up. you said you could you... live off it. So it had to be a it was decent good. amount of money. I mean, I, that's Plus what I'm, I'm saying. My I'm, money, the, so. <laughs> what's that? I'm good with my money too. Okay. So but, I know some of the other girl, I, I know some of the other models that when they would get their paycheck, they would run and get their, you know, Prada, Gucci, whatever it is. I'm not that girl. I mean, the biggest expense for me that I will splurge on is food. I love my food. I'm a Chicago okay. girl. I'm a Greek girl. So um, oh, it's definitely not going to be as exactly. Oh, it's not going to be as expensive as, you know, the labeled outfits or the label, you know, or the hot car. Those things don't matter to me. So I didn't spend on things that somebody else might. Um, so Meghan Markle was one of the girls. Yes, she was. She was on there for a short period of time. Uh, I either the first season or the second season. I think it was the second season. She was on for a few months and she was an alternate. So she would sit in the back until she was needed. She would either be the banker girl or a briefcase girl whenever, um, you know, they needed her. She would be there on point. But uh, it was a short period, but she was there. She was definitely there. What's the largest amount you ever had in your briefcase? We had a special show where I had $5 million. Um, and... The woman picked me at the wrong time. Sadly, she, her her deal went down, and yeah, it was uh, too bad. But it was five million dollars. 
Wait a minute. She picked her at the wrong time. If you well, during her game, like she picked me at the wrong time as you're eliminating your cases. She ended up. Yeah, oh, okay. and it was and it made her deal in the next round go down. So it was unfortunate for her. I felt so bad because you do you feel responsible. You take it personally. You're like, oh my god, I ruined this for her. even though you have nothing to do with it. We don't know what's in our cases. Um, they're handed to us. They're locked up up until we get on stage. So you have no idea what you're even getting. Um, you can't look in the case if a case drops. They start the game all over and reshuffle the cases, even if the case doesn't open. If it's dropped, they have to redo everything. They have a third company that's there. There are cameras all around. So we, ha you know, everything's legit on the up and up and and we start over. But and that's happened a few times. <laughs> have you seen the reboot they're doing for this? Uh, and it's, have you seen this? Deal or no deal? And I believe it's on an island. Correct. You know Yes, actually, they asked me to be a contestant on it. And um, initially, I thought about it. And I'm like, you know, I wouldn't mind doing something different. Um, it has a, like an amazing race survivor twist to it. Um, and I thought, oh, this could be different. And, you know, why not? I'm, you know, I'm part of a deal. And I, I wanted to be part of deal or no deal again. I, I you know, after three versions of it, I'm like, I'm going to go over this too. But then um, the more and more I knew about it, uh, it, I knew it wasn't for me personally. Um, it's more of a reality show. I mean, there is the game show aspect of it, but the contract, I, once we looked at the contract, it was, it, this isn't right no for deal. me. So. No deal. No deal. No, no deal. deal. Yeah. Well, once you see certain things like in perpetuity and name and likeness, you start thinking, uh, yeah. but I see but where I some people would want to do it. Did I see this right, that the, the prize is $200 million? Did I see that number or am I hallucinating? I saw I'm not million sure dollars. if it is, but I did hear that it's the largest amount uh, in game show history. Um, so you're probably right. Um, <laughs> but I see Leslie, no deal? <laughs> no deal. <laughs> no deal. Um, Hashtag no deal. Yeah, the NBC um, website says $200 million. Is it $200 million? I mean, that's a lot of money. Yeah, I, I was... Yeah, it I is thought, a lot of money. For a second, I thought you said twenty million or two no, no. Uh, two million, but yeah, two hundred million. No. That's ridiculous. Maybe I should have gone on after all. What was I 200 thinking? Two hundred million. Yes. Two hundred million. million. And why did I say no to this? I don't know. Okay, I'm going to talk to your agent and see if he can or she can. Is it a he or she? So I or is it a they? I, I want to be right he, here. He. Uh, <laughs> do you want to be my agent on this? <laughs> yeah. I. Uh, well, I, the whole and. and you cover all this in your book about what you need to look out for. And it's a lot of stuff that you would think, well, that seems kind of obvious, but you want to hear it from somebody who's gone through all of the craziness. And you want to give us some of the moments where you thought, ah, why am I doing this? It had to be so ugly because <laughs> I've heard stories. My God. About being at the same time, I'm just, looking at Leslie's comments. Uh, are you talking about deal or no deal specifically? I'm just talking about just what you've gone through and how long you've been doing this. 35 years, over yeah. 35. Yeah. And I can um, imagine some of the stuff you had to go through and had your head stepped on a few times and thought, maybe this <laughs> is it. <laughs> there are definitely people that don't have your best interests. Definitely. Um, I mean, when, when I got on Deal or No Deal, there was a manager who was like trying to sell himself to me, he, how he represented this actress that I actually knew and was on like my favorite soap opera. And he was selling me how great he was. But then he said, but I need a cut of your deal or no deal money to represent you. And I'm like, you had nothing to do with this. There's no way. Um, then I've had an agent where they said, you know, uh, honey, when I first moved to, to L.A., honey, you're not going to work here uh, with that nose. You need to go have it done. He had me turn to the side and I was like, what is he asking me? Um, he was telling me I need to go get a nose job to work. And I'm like, I just came from New York and I worked enough. But, and, but I actually said to him, I'm like, you know, you're lucky I'm not this young girl coming in who would listen to you and go out and get surgery because you told me I could not work. Um, that's on you. That That's your beliefs. You know, your beliefs. That's not mine. You know, if I want to do it for myself, that's one thing, but it's not. Um, so 
I, I, I had a few things to say to him um, and moved on and knew he wasn't the right agent for me. So um, you definitely encounter. I had another agent who told me, face it, you're you're too old now. At one point when I was 30, he was sending me out for 50 year old um, jobs. And I, I was like, what's happening? And he's like, well, face it, you're old now. And I was like, right. what do you mean? I'm like, I know I'm getting older and that's fine. And I accept that. Yes, I'm getting Aren't older. That's great. Yes. And That's you're getting what I older, said. And you're getting older and you're getting older. Uh, I was going to ask you that where as a woman in that business, as you age, now you're getting the rearview mirror look where there are younger women coming in and they're looking at that girl, woman, as opposed to you. Right. Yeah. Well, I will say kudos to Deal or No Deal because I was actually one of the oldest girls on the show. So we had a span from uh, 17 to 32. So I was 32 when I first got Deal or No Deal. Um, and then when I was 40 something, I went on the new version. So that was great. They didn't look at my age. They didn't think twice about it where I know other jobs, they have looked at age. Um so in that regard, that was one situation where I was like, this is awesome. This is great. Um, I'm trying to think there have been other situations. Oh, and that agent, the, the one agent I was telling you who said, face it, you're old. I, I ran into him out one night and saw him with a girl that was much younger. So I knew that probably that's his own personal taste is he likes younger women. So I'm like, I can't be with this agent when, you know, this is my livelihood and he's hurting my livelihood. So yeah. it was inevitable. I was going to leave him and I did. Uh, didn't want anything yeah. to do with that. But it's sad because he's still one of the head agents at this agency. Oh, I was going to say, and that man was Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> yeah. All right. Did you, in your goals, uh, look at doing sitcoms or any of that? Did that interest you? Um. The acting, I, I like the acting, but I love hosting more. Uh, I did get on um, the same time I did Deal. I got on a sitcom and um, did a couple things from soaps to sitcoms. So I did some of that and even film like small parts, nothing major. Um, but for me, I personally love the TV hosting more. Um, that just suits my personality. I just love you know, interviewing people. I love those shows and even infomercials. I do a lot of those and love that part of it. Um, but I wouldn't turn down a sitcom if it came my way. Um, I, you know, if I had the opportunity and I booked it, absolutely. I would, I would take that opportunity. I don't discriminate. Okay, that agent is uh, not going to discourage you from doing that. <laughs> hey, no. Don't do deal or no deal. You're done with that. Stop doing that. It's not enough money. Okay, great. <laughs> Just take the 10 per, What is the percentage the agents usually take now? 10, 15? So what are they for, soaking it for? Uh, TV and film, um, all union stuff is 10%. For modeling, it's 20%. Um, so, it, it, and if you have a manager, that's another, depending on yeah. what you negotiate with your manager, 10 to 20%. Yeah. You hear these stories where these, these stars have a manager, an agent, a publicist, a publicist. and you start taking all that out of the paycheck and they end up broke after a long run. You know, who was just talking about this was Tiffany Haddish. She actually, uh, it was a big thing on, I, I think she went on Access Hollywood Extra talking about this, that, you know, you think we make all this great money, but then that money goes out to paying all these different people to do what you do and to get you out there and to keep the PR and the networking. And, you know, there, it's it's a lot of work. It, it definitely is. Um, it's more than people realize. That's why I always tell people, you know, you think it's glitz and glamour and there is but there's the business side that you really need to think about and learn about. So I do talk about that in the book. You need to realize who all the players are. You need to learn the terms. And listen, I went, I started my career as a model, but I ended up getting into acting, hosting, writing. Um, I ended up pitching shows with Howie for a year. I had a show idea. I pitched it to him. He liked it. So for a year we went out and tried to get the show picked up. Um, I, produce my own fitness DVD. So I never in my wildest dreams thought, wow, I'm going to do this one day. I, I just wanted to be entertainment. I looked up to, you know, people like Christy Turlington, Kathy Ireland, and 
it took a, over a, a life in itself once I got into it and learned more and more. I was just really aware and really paid attention and absorbed as much as I could and figured out what I was good at and what I wasn't good at and you know what I wanted to do and what I didn't want to do and just navigated it that way. And um, it grew into a whole other thing. I've actually managed other people as well. Um, so I, I definitely love the other side of the business too. Um, so, you know, it can turn into so many other things and, you know, you don't, you don't even realize it until you're in yeah. it. All right. Well, it's all in the book there as far as the what to do and what not to do's. And I was going to be a model. And I walked in and the agent looked at my nose and said, your nose is too big. And I started sobbing. And that was the end of that. Okay. You could have been number 27. <laughs> uh, briefcase number 27. Okay. Yes. All right. Patricia, continued success. Thank you for sharing your, your story. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Patricia, Such a pleasure, Gary. Gary. Uh, all right. Wait, before Patricia leaves, uh, she's we've not got taking some... questions. That this this is her agent. She doesn't <laughs> take questions. <laughs> she just for speaking questions. to me, Gary. You brought um, my back. Some people are questioning: Did you ever touch Howie Mandel? We... Oh, I love these questions. Um, he, I always tried to high five him. Always, I would try to catch him when he wasn't really thinking about it. But he was he was good. He'd be like, ah, no. But he would let me like touch his head, and he wasn't bothered by it. We would hug him. He was okay. I think initially when deal first started, I could tell it was difficult for him because people were, you know, he has he a is, lot of fans. And for people Explain who aren't aware, he is, he don't is, know. yeah, he, he, he he's a germaphobe issues. and right. he's, uh, he's OCD. I mean, that man can work. He has like a hundred different jobs. He would work our shows for hours and hours, take a jet, go to do a show in uh, Vegas or in Atlantic City. He would fly overnight, do a show there, and then fly back and then do our shows. So I, I don't know how he did it. He's like the Energizer Bunny, but uh, and he was always on, always quick witted. I mean, what you see is what you get. He is he great. Change his name, Patricia, to how he how he did it. <laughs> but there you go uh the other question deal or no deal arcade games uh were you involved in that at all um they have done some of the stuff uh some of the arcade games no some of the games yes they had um I think we even have it at home. They gave us some of the games that I actually have at home um, that we were part of. Uh, so it's really cool. I have like a whole memorabilia thing of Deal or No Deal, like so many. I even have a, a bobblehead of Howie um, and a button that says Deal or No Deal when you press it. It's Howie's voice saying it. Hello, is that Howie you, Gary? Yeah, Hello. there's a Gary. Yeah, this is, <laughs> you have a yeah, too with my little briefcase. <laughs> yeah, yes, uh, I think I look like a, a smush between me and Zach Efron in this look, but I, I'll take I'll take a Zach Efron look any day. You know who you look like there? John no. Travolta. John Travolta. Oh, That's oh, what I see. Did. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? What are you talking? Hey, I'm waiting you for you to like do the. What do you still get syndication money because these deals uh, are running all the time? I see on game show channels. Um, and stuff. The the daytime version isn't airing um, as much as the or at all. The other versions are are on a lot. So every so often, I'll, I'll get a you know a shipment of checks coming in, and it's like Christmas, you know, they, so I get excited. Are they, are they like that Seinfeld episode where he did something in Japan and he's getting all these checks in there for four cents and three cents? <laughs> I've had many of those, even yeah. a penny, down to a penny. Yeah, yeah. I had <laughs> And then you go to the books. bank and you're trying to deposit and they look at you like, yeah, really? Like, you really? You just throw it so away. So like the deal, the deal or no deal channel on like Pluto TV that's showing 24-7, yeah. that, that, that Amazon, generates a few, few revenue Pluto. residuals at a time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's where the money is. That's where it's- Game Show yeah. Network. It's like, a, it's yeah. everywhere. Yeah. I remember- Maybe they'll do a, another- We were on- bloopers and poopers and shooters or whatever that go if you were dick coasted it and got an initial payment of whatever it was union wise and then as the years went on and they kept rerunning it i would get those checks for two dollars and twenty cents and you just you'd actually just put them on the refrigerator with a magnet and look at them that's show business there's your lucrative what? show business career you were big Two dollars and two cents. I mean, that's yeah. big. Yeah. Um, there was a bar in LA 
in the Valley, actually, where if you brought in your penny check, they would put it on the wall and give you free drink, a free drink or free drink. That's awesome. They understood. Yeah, it was yeah. pretty cool, actually. It was a fun thing. We all joke about it all the time. Hey, now that I still do? have you on, and we're in bonus time now. Uh, so did you? As, were you a single woman? And it's none of my business if you don't want to answer this. When you were going through all of this, were you single, or did you have a family already? How did, how did that work? Um, single, pretty much. I met my husband right before Deal or No Deal, actually. Uh, we started dating, I think, a year and a half before Deal. So he was part of it when everything started happening. And I was like, there's this game show I'm doing without, you know, so it was kind of cool he, to watch everything happen along the way. Um, but before that, I was, you know, just dating, uh, just had my family. My sister would come visit me in L.A. and be part of everything, brought my mom to a lot of my things. And it's so it was so cool to have my mom come to L.A. to see what I was doing because she she was, you know, a Greek woman from the village. She didn't comprehend what was happening, what I did. Um, and when I first started, I mean, at 15, you 16, too hard. You worked she, too hard. <laughs> she really did. She would she actually cried. She's like, you can't do this. It's, she thought it was like porn or, you yeah, know, or she didn't, what you doing? <laughs> she didn't understand. She saw I did a swimsuit calendar when I was about 19. And it, it was just outrageous for her. She just cried. And then fast forward, she came to L.A. I had an audition for a soap opera and they let her sit in on the audition and I booked it. She was my good luck charm. I booked it and I worked on there quite a, quite a bit, actually. And um, she got to see it. She got to be on set with me and she got to enjoy it. And she was so proud. It was one of the coolest moments for me. And they took a picture with a Polaroid when Polaroids were around. <laughs> so they took a Polaroid picture of us. So uh, I keep that with me all the time. It was just it's That's one of my sure. favorite moments. When you first moved to Los Angeles, did your mother say, are you in Sherman Oaks or Van Nuys? <laughs> she didn't know why. what those were. <laughs> hey, she didn't. I'll tell you why I said that, because whenever I would go to Los Angeles and I'd call my mother, say hello, she would always say to me, are you in Sherman Oaks or Van Nuys? And after a while, I said, why do you keep mentioning those towns? And she said, because the only thing I know about Southern California is from watching game shows and all the contestants are from <gasps> Sherman Oaks or Van Nuys. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually true. If you watch uh, with, <laughs> with uh, the one Drew Carey is on now, uh, yeah, Price is Right, Price right? Is right. Is that, yeah. A lot of them were Sherman Oaks. Or, you're right. Yes. That's really funny. That's yeah, really, yeah. That- that's where I get my uh, sense of humor from, from my mother, because uh, she that's the way she thinks. And that's how I, I love it. it. Yeah, I will say on deal, they had a lot of Chicago contestants that came through um, and Greek contestants, which, of course, made me happy and proud. Uh, just having, you know, both Chicago and Greek. And what a great. And actually, with well, the one person was a Greek from Chicago. So, wow, that, that from, <laughs> yeah, so I was pretty excited about that. That made me happy. Like, yes, bring my peeps in. Bring them in. Yes. <laughs> Let's flame I up ju- some cheese. I, I just oh, want to know what, what after after they called your case, right? Your case is called early in the show, case number nine. You open the case. You go backstage. And is there a party going on backstage? You <laughs> in the green room watching the other girls eat carrot sticks. What's, what's going on backstage uh, after your case is called? So I was probably the only one that did not sit down or sit still because you're on your feet for a long time. It it does tend to hurt after a while being in these heels. So a lot of the girls would take their shoes off and either nap or chill out in the back. They had chairs for each one of us and craft services. I tend to, I would tend to the craft service and I would feed everybody as a nice Greek girl. <laughs> I would I loved feeding everybody and that kept me going. I would not take my shoes off because Leslie, you could probably back me up. Once you take those shoes off, you can't put them back on. Your feet hurt too much. So there was no point. So I would keep my shoes on. Megan Markle, more Slovaki. I love that you know this all. I love it. <laughs> More Uzo. Oh, Uzo, yes. Yeah. So yeah. good. No. Megan sitting oh. back there. I could be married to royalty when I'm sitting back here with my shoes off. <laughs> with their big with- swollen feet. Yeah, well, yes. good luck to that. But oh all my right. God. On top of we that, have- look, it turns out that 
Patricia or is it Trisha? You what are we? Uh, Chicagoans um, call me Patty, actually, believe it or not. Uh, when people call me and they say Patty, I know they're from Chicago. Um, but everybody else college. Says, Trisha, Patricia. Yes, Columbia College. Did you go we there had, too? We had so many technical issues before the show started, just so everybody knows that we <laughs> barely, like, we're on my end, in, like these weird blips, and it's like uh, Lincoln Square, <laughs> Bud Long School, and then, uh, yeah, so Columbia College, girlfriend. And St. Demetrius <laughs> Church. That you wanted to yeah. go to Greek school. I, I'm very sorry you didn't get in. See, I know. Uh, Come on, Gary. Opa. And I can swear. Oh, 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 I, I can't believe you know that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Oh. Do you go to the Greek what? festival there? Oh, my God. I used, we used to go every year. All right, we're going to have a Greek night when I get to Chicago. <laughs> Here, yes, here's the will. dealio with the Greek community because my dear friend George Bliss is Greek <laughs> and he is the unofficial Greek marriage. I love George. And yes. we go to these Greek events and everybody is very tight. I mean, people, they want to help each other in the community. And it's really cool because- it's, George it's, is that person. Yeah. Yeah, he's very much that person. I, I love George, and George is the one who connected us. So thank you, George. I hope he's watching. He better be. Um, yeah, he yeah. Thank you, George, for connecting us. I, you guys have been so great, and, and oh, we yeah. are going to do Greek night. Oh, we will. And with that, it turns out that you've got that Midwest vibe that a lot of people yeah. are catching on to, and it, it seems like it's something that makes people feel comfortable and and they want to, you know, spend time with you right away. And I, I'm pretty sure that's probably oh, what thank you. Said deal or no deal we're picking up on too. So yeah. I have to go. tell you a lot of people kept telling me when I moved away from Chicago, they kept telling me how nice Chicagoans are. I didn't understand it until I lived away for a while that I was like, Oh yeah, they're right. Chicagoans are good people. They're nice. <laughs> that's um, kind of what we do. Yeah, yeah, so likewise, my friends. Brian, who's part of the house band for the Gear Force, oh yes, he said here on the screen, they're gonna be at this Greek church, St. Nectarius, this summer? Yes, it's for some yes. Greek fest? the Greek wow. festival. All right. That's well, a good you time, go. worth going to, guys. All right. <laughs> Yay. I'll All meet right. you there. Thank you, All right. <laughs> Thank you Thank guys, you guys. have a great night. Thank you. All right. Happy Thank birthday. You. Oh, likewise, yes, back at you. Thank you. Patricia, Sunday, and then Leslie's on Wednesday. Woo, cheers. Woo. Oh, cheers. You're slacking, Leslie. Ah, uh, <laughs> no, I'm pacing. Yeah. I still okay. have to read. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, yeah. Let, let's set the uh, table here for the giveaway because it's almost done. We're almost done here. Yeah, we kind of, so, yeah, we're, we're uh, on top of everything else. You may have noticed that Ryan's not with us, but he's in transit right now. So yeah, he's uh, driving. But we somewhere. do have a Wisconsin report. We do, oh. and we have well, to play the sponsors and all the other stuff. What do you want to do first? Let Let's go ahead and do the uh, the giveaway info. Go ahead and okay, get share that the prize started. With and yeah, so this is what she was saying during the interview: is hashtag no deal. Um, but let's start with. Uh, from Scott's Vintage Antiques and Collectible, we have a great little uh, thing that you can put on your varsity sweater. We have a Hot Wheels Batman <laughs> car. Um, we have stuff from our house band, oh yes, including a koozie, nice a bracelet. Koozie. And now this year guitar this is pick. special we get guitar picks beside and i think that's our own brian right there on the guitar He's pick. rocking um but anyway uh beside that we have a candy necklace because who doesn't love a candy necklace that's a good um, stripper name <laughs> uh tracy from wisconsin of course sends us the bendables i'm sending it too because this bendables i got jinky in transit so you got one with great eyes and one with eh, kind of a questionable one uh yeah. on top of that she always gives us the ball liquors which are yeah, ever does. so popular and you can have those personalized for your own golf event if you're doing any of those this year seriously I like to see this those at the masters 
Exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, Ryan from Wisconsin. Thanks to Hank, I've got a capybara sticker and we've got a refrigerator magnet and the prize that started it all. Your the very condom. own wine condom. So all there right. you go. Hashtag no Hashtag deal. No deal. Um, so Laren, no space. You got to put it all together. Re-enter. Uh, or Larry, is that Larry N. Patty? Whatever. Right. Um, no space. Hashtag no deal. All right. Let's play the commercials before we go into anything else. And that would be starting with Bettenhausen Automotive. Wait, I got too many things happening. The first we got <laughs> to uh, this year. Let me call somebody yeah. while you're doing that. Hello. Uh, and then we yeah. got. Oh my God, uh, top of the hour, uh, news, uh, traffic, weather. Uh, and all the other stuff we, we don't need. All right, here it is. Get $10,000 off your new 2024 Ram 1500 at Bettenhausen Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Tinley Park. Ram 1500 is the most luxurious and technologically advanced Ram 1500 ever. And right now, get $10,000 off MSRP during Ram Truck Month at Bettenhausen. Your best buying experience starts now with a great selection of Ram trucks at Bettenhausen. Showroom never closes at BettenhausenCDJR.com. And David Hochberg is your man. If you're looking for a mortgage, a refi, veteran's loan, reverse mortgage, any of that stuff, he knows what to do. And he's offering you a free consultation before you decide to do business. What more could you ask for? Find out about all of that with those numbers on the screen. All right. David Hochberg, great guy. All right. Uh, what do you want to do first, Leslie? We should do uh, the Wisconsin report, right? I would think so. Yeah. Why don't we do that, Alan, and then we'll have some stories in the giveaway. Here we It's Wisconsin, yeah, hey. Hey, everybody, it's Ryan from Wisconsin. An update on a story I talked about last week where the lady left her baby on the sidewalk to go into the woods to collect trash. Well, talking to an acquaintance who frequents that area often because he buys and sells merchandise. Actually, it's underwear and panties. He buys and sells them for his wife. I never asked if they were used or new, but he says he's there three or four times a week and has seen the lady in the woods often cleaning up the trash. I thought I'd go check it out myself. Here's the picture. You can see the woods behind that sign and you can see how warm it is today. It's been really a good week here in Wisconsin. I don't know if I've ever talked to you about Gertrude Bassey the cow. This is a cow that was put together in the late 70s and it's in front of Lifeway dairy processing plant in Waukesha. You can see over the holidays, they decorate her for Christmas and for uh, put a witch's costume on for Halloween. So if you're around Waukesha, go check out the big cow. Finally, I'm not sure if I'm going to be here on Friday because we have a bowling tournament in Wausau, Wisconsin. It's a state tournament where Henry bowls both Saturday and Sunday. So we'll be pretty tired and pretty full of bowling, I think. Maybe on the way home, we'll run into a capybara. I'll talk to you soon. Nothing Once like putting again. an eight-year-old on a traveling bowling team. <laughs> hey, really? Come on. There's the kappa. Capybaras. Yeah, we're all over that. Um, I got to love Banana Man. Um Hashtag sitting on my hands. Once again, if you have won sometime in the last year, do that uh, so that other people get a chance to win. Because we we want to spread the love around. Uh, I like how, first of all, I wish Ryan was here because I got to ask him about that guy that's buying panties and underwear. Where, where is he buying? I mean, what? what? what the I don't know. No, no, no. The that, question is, why does Ryan know this person? That, that's well, the question. Because when he sent me this video to, to produce this week, I'm like, he knows the weirdest people. It's not just that he attracts them. Oh, he knows yeah. them. Oh, yeah, he does. He does. And I like that line, which could go in Wisconsin. And if you want to come and see a fat cow, come up to Wisconsin. And oh, boy. Oh, and, oh boy. And Ryan truly is a kook magnet. I mean, yeah. he's he is the most mild-mannered, nice guy. And for some reason, they find him. Yeah. All the time. Even we've been out to dinner with him and he attracts them as you're sitting there. It's well, 
As, as I pointed out in previous shows, we walked into a restaurant that was completely empty. We were the only two people in this restaurant. And damn it, if people didn't grab the, the seat right behind us. Every other seat was empty, but that's yep. Ryan's juju. Um, on right. top of that, I should also mention before we go, uh, you've been getting some kudos because it turns out Gary Meyer, a lot of people think they're interviewers, but they're not. Uh, you, my man, are a great interviewer. Oh, and thank you. I just, okay. And boy, am I excited about next week. What? One of the Gear Force viewers, as luck would have it, wrote Beaverpedia. The encyclopedia on Leave It to Beaver. Look at this thing. It's everything you want to know <laughs> oh about God. Leave It to Beaver, which I want to know. And I said to the man who wrote this, Brian, uh, you've got to come on and talk about this. He's going to be on next Friday. Everything you ever wanted to know about Leave It to Beaver. And once again, you know, like when some people heard who our guest was going to be this week, it's like, she's what? Holy shnikey. I mean, I just, I just like talking to people that have done. What a great interview this was. Kind of uh, different she's... stuff. Uh, oh, stuff my God. that you might not see on your regular shows Thank all the time. Goodness. I just like talking to people like that. So that's why you're a Hall of Famer. And a mm. lot of people, you know, I'm just, I am only like, sharing what a lot of people have already posted. I'm not trying to well, blow smoke you. I up your ass. That. It's just, not like I, it's going to increase my... I'm going to have my agent call Gary and ask yeah, for a raise. Right. And your <laughs> agent has told you several times, stop doing this show. Get, to, get off the show. Get off. And remember, Gary oh. always said he knew he's made it when he made it into toast. There you go. Yes. Yeah, my visage was on a piece of toast. That was, <laughs> that was it. There's nowhere else to go. So, um, what do you got, Leslie? Oh, uh, yeah, that old thing. My part of this show. Uh, sorry, kids. Um, okay, while some of us are awaiting the return of McDonald's Shamrock Shakes, Starbucks customers in China are lining up for a limited edition pork-flavored latte. They're hitting the market to coincide with the Lunar New Year, this, of course, being the Year of the Dragon. Uh, the so-called Abundant Year of Savory Latte, or... Lucky Savory Latte is made from, and here you go, Dong Poi braised pork flavor sauce with espresso and steamed milk topped with a drizzle of pork sauce and a cubed pork car uh, garnish. According to Starbucks, <laughs> carnish, uh, garnish, uh, according to Starbucks, eating meat is a way of ensuring prosperity in the coming year. Uh, let's hope so, because each drink is going to set you back around $10. What's the story with taste buds around the world? You hear about this stuff, and I think Anthony Bourdain had just about had it when he saw these people eating dog junk and whatever. Uh, right. That was it. Even Anthony Bourdain, may he rest in peace, couldn't take it anymore. You know, it's like... Oh, let's have some gator. It tastes like chicken. Well, then why aren't we eating oh, chicken? God, I uh, can't believe what these people eat. My uh, God, I can't believe it. Uh, but, you know, it's uh, when I was in Mexico, they were serving me uh, candy that was seasoned with hot sauce. And I'm like, I don't get it. And yet hot is, is in. Anything that burns your taste buds like to the point of yeah. no longer being able to taste. Yeah, apparently get is what a lot of people are into. Mm, um, and it. finally, officials in Florida are floating the idea of putting restrictions on digging holes at the beach. This comes in response to kind of a tragic story. And uh, not kind, kind of, of. it's a tragic story. Yeah, I think story. kind exactly. of pregnant. Yeah, it exactly. either is or isn't. No, this is a tragic story out of South Florida in which a seven-year-old girl was killed and a nine-year-old boy was injured when the six-foot deep hole they were playing in collapsed in on them. Uh, digging holes on the beach is currently legal, but some would like to see that change. One idea would be requiring all diggers to refill their holes after digging. There's also talk of putting restrictions on just how deep a hole should be. I was trying to figure, I saw the news story, how how they did this, where the girl got buried. It was a just narrow and straight down. 
because they showed this pretty big hole. Right. I couldn't figure out how that happened, but it happened. Well, it's it's engineering, and it and I get the feeling that like sometimes adults get out there and they build the big holes, and now kids are playing in it, and it just well builds Leslie, exponentially. You know, I've been saying for years, stay at the pool. There's no reason <laughs> exactly. to go down to the beach for any any reason. No reason. Anyway, okay. yeah, that it. I think so. All right, here we go, uh, and thanks. it's happy birthday week for Leslie, and we're going to hit the button and give something away here. You know, it's supposed to be a leap year, baby. I would have been turning a sweet something or another this year, but that didn't happen. Yeah. All right, hit it, Alan. Here we go. Who's going to win? Is it... Mr. Hot Roll, it is. I am not seeing Mr. Hot Roll on the... Uh... Congratulations. Alan, what should Mr. Hot Roll do? Mr. Hot Roll, please send your United States mailing address, which probably includes your actual name, to Gary Meyer's show at garymeyer.com or text 773-888-2157. Regular charges apply. And of course, since I said use your regular name, be sure to let us know that you're Mr. Hot Roll so that we know... <laughs> But that's why yeah. we're receiving this particular yeah. and name. And no address. cheating. We'll right. know. Yeah, we'll, we will. All right. That's it. Thanks to Patricia. And hope she has a good birthday on Sunday. Leslie, we'll talk on your birthday so we can get right to it. And here is the cannoli coming down the aisle. It is fantastic and complimentary. Wow. Decorative. Ooh, two forker. That's it's a two forker. Pretty. That's very pretty. All right. And what about the schnauzer? When it comes to your schnauzer, deal or no deal, make it a good deal. Ping. Nice. All right. Here is the flaps. Uh, here are the flaps coming down, the gear, three in the green. And we're ready to touch down with the Gear Force, the voice of the globe, America's podcast. Have a great weekend. We have landed. And that's it for all the news and nonsense here at the Gear Force. If you like that, I got other stuff I think you're going to like. This is the Gear Force. Thanks for streaming. Like, subscribe, and be kind. But no need to rewind. It sure would be terrific if you subscribe to the Gear Force Live YouTube channel. More eyeballs. If you are watching this show recorded, that button is right here. And if you'd like to look at past episodes, try that button. Boom, shaka laka. That's it. All right, how do you shut this thing off?